Are you looking for ways to get more involved here at the Star? Do you have leadership skills and would love to facilitate one of our small groups? Well, we're looking for you. Small group leadership signups are on our website. All you have to do is go to beatmetothestart.net, click the banner that says small group leadership, send us your information and we will be in contact with you. Our next semester of small groups is coming up and we're looking for leaders now. After weeks of having a packed house and a crazy parking lot, Pastor has made a decision to test an additional service time in the month of April. Beginning the first Sunday in April, the Star Church Birmingham location will have two services, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Beat me to the star. Next weekend is a Team Star weekend starting Saturday at 9 a.m. for an all-star staff meeting. Yes, we're asking all leaders, all volunteers to be here at 9 a.m. for our all-star staff meeting. At 10 a.m., we will have Star University 104. So if you made a decision to connect with us this past month, guess what? This is an opportunity for you to do Star University 104 and join a team. And on Sunday, it's Water Sunday, so we will have baptism. And after that, we will also have communion. Next Sunday is also your first opportunity to sign up for a small group. All you have to do is go online to beatmetothestar.net, click the banner that says small group sign up, and choose the small group of your choice. I'm so excited about what's going on here at the Star, and I'm glad that you are part of it as well. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and surely we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. It is Wednesday, which means that it's hump day, which means that today is a special day in the life of our churches. I study at the Star Bible Study Day, but before we get into all of that, again, I want to say good morning. Listen, this morning you should have received a text message straight to your phone. I need you to do us a favor this morning. I need you to take that text message, and I need you to forward to at least five people in your contact list. Make sure that their life is blessed as a result of this morning's prayer call. Listen, if you're viewing us on YouTube, I also need you to do me a favor. I need you to click the share button that's at the bottom of your screen, and I need you to share this prayer call with as many people as possible. I promise you today is going to be a blessing and you don't want to be stingy and get all of the blessings by yourself. If you're wondering what text message we're talking about, you can text into our text messaging list by texting the word STAR to 833-270-2717 and you will be able to get up to the minute updates of everything that's going on in the life of the STAR. Listen, there are a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention right before we pray and jump into our devotional thought. And the first thing I want to let you know is again, today is Wednesday, which means that it is our study at the Star Bible Study. So I need you to take a lunch break. Come kick with us for at least one hour. Come get your soul fed, and I promise you, your life will be all the better. Right here at our Birmingham campus, 12 noon, Central Standard Star. I want to see your face in the place. Listen, this Sunday, we are going to roll out our registration for our small groups, but we are still looking for leaders. Am I talking to a leader this morning? If that is you, I need you to go to the website today. Do not delay. www.beatmetothestar.net. Scroll down until you see that flyer, small group leader. Click that flyer. Sign up to be a small group leader this day. Listen, we're going to help you. We're going to walk with you. We're going to give you training. We're going to make sure that you have all of the tools that you need. We're rolling out small group coaches this year, which means that every small group leader will have a small group coach assigned to them. So I promise you, you will not be leading by yourself so if you feel led to lead a small group if you led in the past and you feel like running the back sign up today and then we are going to roll out our registrations this coming sunday we're going to have it online and we're going to have it in person so you can be a part of our small group community and if you are a leader at the start whether you're paid staff unpaid staff volunteer 
whatever capacity that you serve in. We have our leadership meeting this coming Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here at our Birmingham location. So you want to make sure that you're there as we continue to dwell in the spirit of unity. Listen, those are all of the announcements that I have so far. I'm excited to be with you all this morning because over the past several weeks, we have not been doing this thing by ourselves. I have a, a dynamic, dynamic, dynamic man of God with me this morning, a man after God's own heart, a man who leads us into the presence of the Lord every single Sunday and does it with a great, great spirit of joy and humility. And I'm excited just to be able to do ministry with this young man of God. And so I'm excited to introduce to you this morning, the person who will be leading us in prayer and who will be doing this devotional thought with me, none other than our brother, our friend, Harrell Williams. Wherever you are, let's put your hands together for our brother. Let's What's thank up, him everybody? for being here. What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? You doing all right? I'm doing good. That's good. It's man. early. It is early, man. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to be here this morning. Yes, we even sir. had an opportunity. I think this is our first time doing it together. together yeah. So, man, I'm, I'm excited. And I pray you're excited. So, listen, uh, we're going to pray. Just uh, pray whatever God lays on our heart. And uh, we'll jump into our, de- our devotion to thought. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's pray. Um, Father, we come to you right now in this moment, and God, we simply first just want to say thank you. God, we want to say thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and I pray, God, that you'll help us to rejoice and to be glad in this day. God, we want to say thank you for allowing us to see the very first day in a brand new month. God, you have kept us all year long, and God, we just want to say thank you. God, we've experienced so many different challenges from January all the way up through the month of April, but God, because this is a new month, and this is a new day, God. We know that there are new blessings and new desires and dreams, God, that you're going to do through us and for us. And God, we want to say thank you for allowing us to be able to experience that. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as we go throughout this day, God, that you'll help us to rejoice in it, God, for there are so many things that are going on in this world, God, that we can soak about, that we can complain about, and it can get us down in the dumps. But God, we're choosing to rejoice this morning because we know that the spirit of the living God is alive. You are alive this morning, God. You are moving. You are breathing. You are working things out for our good. And God, we're just so grateful and just so thankful that we get to come to you early on this morning in prayer. God, for there are so many things that we could be doing. We could be in the gym exercising. We could be at work. We could be studying for an exam in school. We could be getting the kids ready for school. But God, we decided to just pause in this moment and to just honor you with the first part of our day. And Father, we thank you that as you place it upon our hearts and you place it upon our minds, God, to honor you first, God, you're going to take care of every single thing that concerns us. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that as we go throughout this day, God, that you help us to have meaningful moments where we'll just sit and we'll just pause and just soak in your presence. I pray that even in this moment, God, that as we're praying, that we will literally feel the closeness, God, that you have toward us, God, that you're with us, that you're near us, that you're in us, God, that you're moving, that you're breathing, and that you are having your way. God, I want to say thank you this morning that you can literally choose to use anybody, but God, you're choosing to use us in spite of all of our faults, in spite of all of our flaws and all our failures. God, you look beyond all of those and you still call us blessed. You still call us highly favored. God, you still call us the head and not the tail. You still say that we're above and not to be beneath. You still say that we are the lender and we are not the borrower as we are obeying your commandments God we thank you right now God that you're causing your blessings to chase us down we thank you Father that your goodness and your mercy is following us every single day of our lives and as your goodness and your mercy is chasing us down God we thank you that his, it has overtaken us and God you have allowed us to be able to experience your marvelous works on this side of heaven and so Father In the name of Jesus, I just pray that as we rejoice throughout this day, that our rejoicing will be so contained, so contagious that men, women, boys and girls will look at us knowing what we're going through. And they will say, I want to have joy like that. I want to have peace like that. And that will be our opportunity to brag about you and boast about you, God, to give you everything that you deserve. So, Lord, in this moment, I want to lift up the Star Church. God, thank you right now 
for giving us a ministry in four communities in Birmingham, Pell City, Sylacauga, and in Forestdale. God, I want to say thank you for allowing us to participate, God, in the expansion of your kingdom. God, and I thank you for trusting these souls to us. So I pray right now, God, that you allow us to still be a, a close to the slogan, God, and they're still coming. God, we literally see people joining and making the decision for Jesus every single Sunday, and God, we're so grateful. Lord, in the age where there are so many people who have not experienced for themselves these blessings, God, thank you for choosing to allow us to experience it. I pray, God, we will continue to be excited about this, God, because this is what we're doing everything for. We preach for your glory. We sing for your glory. We open up the house of the Lord for your glory so that people will be saved from their sins. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will continue to save us through sanctification from our sins. God, thank you for the gift of small groups. God, there are literally going to be hundreds of people who are going to join small groups, God, and they're literally going to allow themselves to get in the position where they can look more and more like you. I pray for every small group leader. I pray for every participant. I pray, God, that you will breathe upon the summer semester. I pray, Father, that as people are literally experiencing their gifts, I pray, Father, that they will use their gifts for your glory. And I thank you in advance, God, for giving us a shepherd, God, who's given us the avenues and the lanes, God, to be able to use the gifts that you've given inside of us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up our senior pastor, Dr. Thomas Beavers, and I pray, God, that you continue to bless him. God, continue to anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet to be able to do what it is that you called him to do. And I pray, Father, that with every stress that is on his shoulders, God, that you will allow him to take them off of his shoulders and put them inside of your hands. God, I pray that you remind him, God, that you're leading him and you're guiding him every day. And I pray, God, wherever there is confusion that's going on in his life, God, I pray that you will give clarity. I pray, Father, for his marriage and God, that it continue to be vibrant and strong. So I lift up Sister Candy his beavers in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'll continue to place a hedge of protection around them all the days of their lives. And God, as you continue to bless them, bless their children, bless their grandchildren, bless their businesses. God bless whatever it is that their hands touch. And I thank you in advance, God, that you're going to continue to allow all of us to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And so, Lord, we're excited yes. about what you're doing in this day. God, you're doing something amazing that even if you were to tell it all to us, God, some of us still would not believe. But because you have spoken in your word that we are blessed, God, we believe we are blessed. God, we believe what you said in your word. So, God, help us not to walk by what we see, but only walk by what you said, because we walk by faith and not by sight. And we believe in the name of Jesus that as we continue to seek after your heart, God, that you will give us those things that are in your hands. And God, we are going to be able to be a blessing to so many people. So God, we love you so much. Yes. We know that the best is yet to come. And we thank you for what thank you've you done, Jesus. what you're doing and what you will do. Father, I lift up a special prayer this morning for those who may have awakened this morning with the spirit of heaviness yes, on them. God. Father God, we know that you declared in your word that you've given a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, Father God. And those who are dealing with trouble in their mind, trouble in their homes, trouble in their jobs, mm -hmm. Father, we pray right now that you would give them a praise, Father God, yes, that God. supersedes everything that they've experienced, Father God, a praise from, from a valley experience, Father God, so that they know uh, that even though they're in the valley, you're with them in the valley and they, they can look to the hills from which cometh their help. Father God, we know that there's nothing in this earth that catches you by surprise. You know everything. Everything is in your hands, Father God. All of their emotions, yes, all of God. our troubles, all of our sorrows, Father God, we cast them all on you because you care so much for us, Father God. And because we know that you care, we know that we can rejoice, Father God. We have a reason to rejoice. There is a reason for us to lift our hands and, and glorify you, Father God, even in trouble, Father God, because we know that after this, there will be glory. After yes. After the God. suffering, there yes, will be God. glory, Father Thank God. You, the sufferings of this present time are not worth mm -hmm. being compared to the glory that shall be revealed, Father God. We know that you cause all things to work together mm -hmm. for the good. The good and the bad all works for yes, the good, God. Father God. So if there's anybody experiencing depression, anxiety, worry, fear, Father God, we cast it all on you, Father, because you care so much for us, God. We lift up our heads. We lift yes, up God. our hands to you, Father God, because you are the lifter of our heads, yes, are, Father God. And we can lift our hands in total praise because you're the source of our strength. You're the strength of our life, Father God. And we just glorify you even in the in, in the darkest moments, Father God. We still can rejoice, Father God, because at the end of this, 
you're going to get the glory, God, yes, and God. we just know that you will do do exactly what you said you're going to do, Father God. So we just thank you in advance. We praise you in advance for the victory, Father God, because you always cause us to win. Father, and we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So it's good just to start our day with prayer, brother. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's always a blessing because if we don't pray, we're in trouble. Oh, absolutely. We're in trouble. And so me and I are to always pray, so we should pray and not lose heart. And I pray that wherever you are, that this is not the only time that you pray, but you will literally take moments throughout the day to pray. And so I'm excited this morning to uh, just have a little discussion, have a little yes, talk. Sir. We have been in a series of messages entitled The God Brand, and we already know that the brand of God is love. love. And so uh, we, we've been talking about this over the past several weeks. And so I just want to ask you from your own personal experience, how have you been enjoying the series? I love the series. Uh, we always talk about branding and um, we always talk about um, the brands that we love, yeah. the clothes, Gucci, all of the yeah. stuff that we love to buy. Um, and those things are great. Um, but none of that compares to the love of God yeah. and understanding how God loves us. Uh, is essential to how we navigate and move through this Christian journey. Yeah, man, that's good because uh, we all like different kinds of brands. Yes, man, Harry, I'm ashamed to say, it, but when I was growing up, there were certain clothes I would not wear <laughs> if uh, if it didn't have a certain brand on For it. For sure. But uh, but man, I'm trying to trying to get beyond that. You For know, sure. I still have a little ways with God working on me. But, Absolutely. Um, my my prayer is that all of us just have the the brand of love that love. you know you can always wear that. You know, we may not always be able to wear Gucci, but uh, we can always wear love. We can love. wear love. We can wear love. And so so on this past Sunday, we uh, talked about um, love is not jealous. We came from 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 around verse number 4, the C clause that love is not jealous. And then we kind of went over to 1 Samuel chapter number 17 and 18 and mm -hmm. looked at how Saul became jealous of David literally tried to kill him because, yes. of, because of that jealousy. And so if you missed that message, go back to the website, www.beatmetothestar.net or our YouTube page, hashtag Team Star, and just kind of get everything that we talked about on this past Sunday because uh, it was good. Real it, good. It, it was real, real good. So we know that love is a choice and it's not an emotion, but jealousy is an emotion that also comes out in our choices. Right. Um, you've been doing ministry for a long time, brother. You, you've you been doing it. And I think they told me they got tapes of you and you was Ooh, a knee baby. Six. And so I'm sure you've seen it all. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the unfortunate things that you've seen in your journey of ministry that's happened as a result of jealousy? Oh, my goodness. Uh, one of the things that I think um, sticks out to me most is how... Uh, we are so eager to sabotage people um, mm. because they have something um, that we are jealous of. Wow. It's uh, you don't know um, how people feel about you until you shine in a moment. Wow! That exposes um, people's attitudes and and their feelings and emotions toward you mm. um you're standing in a particular light yeah. um and they see that light and they want that mm. but sometimes they don't even know what it costs you mm. to stand in that space and understanding that whatever god has for you is for you and whatever yeah. god has for them is for them and sometimes you're, you're unaware that mm. even if you stand in the spot that i stand in yeah. you still aren't me wow. <laughs> like you have a gift you have things that God has placed inside of you to do. Um, and if I stand in your spot, I'm not you. Wow. So I have no reason to be jealous of you for doing what you're gifted and called and anointed to do um, when I'm also gifted and anointed to call and called to do something. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's unfortunate, uh, even with as we saw with um, uh, David and Saul, Saul tried his best to kill David yeah. out of jealousy. Yeah. You can literally lose your life mm. out of somebody desiring something that that God gave you. You didn't wow. give it to yourself. Wow. God gave it to you. Man, I, I think it's critical that we stop and pause and sit on that God gave you. Right. <laughs> because a lot of times we're jealous of people and we're honest or real. We ain't even asked for it. Right? <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's like if people would look at some of the things that a lot of people go through 
and they look at all the hell and the heartache and the heartbreak. It's like nobody in their right mind would say, right. I want to sign up for that. Right. Because as you alluded to, like, we see people's glory, but we don't know their story. Right. And unfortunately, people do some dangerous things as a result of yes. jealousy. Yes. And, and so this past Sunday, um, just kind of get the cliff notes, um, David has slain, slain Goliath. He's gone now. He chopped his head off, bring it back. And, uh, you know, all y'all, you, Daryl, and the pastor, and Brittany, and y'all start singing, you know, uh, Saul is slain his thousands, and David's ten thousands. And Saul literally got so angry that he took a javelin, and he threw it at David, and literally tried to kill him on multiple occasions. Yep. And, unfortunately, jealousy caused Saul's heart to be in a dangerous position. Right. I want to I wanna ask you this, because, again, you've been in ministry for a moment, you mm -hmm. know, for since you were six. Um, what do you think a person's heart posture should be so that they would not fall into jealousy? Well, I, th I think um, one of the things that I, th I think is important for us to remember is that as we are all a part of the kingdom, mm -hmm. everything that a person does for the kingdom is not just a, a, a win for them. It's mm -hmm. a win for the kingdom, yeah. and we're all a part of it. Yeah. So, you know, even as it relates to the the praise singers, the women singing about uh, Saul slaying his uh, thousands and David slaying his tens of thousands, that was a win for everybody yeah. because thousands of enemies were defeated. They were yeah. also David's enemy enemies, and they were Saul's enemies. So when we do something great for God um, and the light is shining on us, that's not just a win for us. It's yeah. a win for everybody yeah. because everybody gets... Uh, the benefit of God's kingdom growing and en enlarging. So I think we should keep in mind that um, one person does what many cannot, but it all benefits the body of Christ. Mm. So, Man, that's good, man. You preaching, man. Oh, man. Lord. You preaching, you preaching. <laughs> um, because a lot of times, unfortunately, we don't think like that. You mm -hmm. know, we look at it in sports all of the time. Um, my favorite basketball player, Guy Rissell, was, was Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And back in the early 2000s, him and Shaq got into a few. Yep. Uh, I believe a little jealousy got there, and it caused what was once a dynasty to no longer exist, right. all because of jealousy. Like, one person wanted to be in the spotlight, and the other person doesn't yep. want to be in the spotlight. And ultimately, I think what it is is we want glory, but glory is reserved for God. Yes. Speak to the person who may want something that only should be reserved for God, such as glory. Just, just kind of speak to what do you think they should start doing if they want glory and it should only be reserved for God? Uh, one of my mentors told me uh, one time um, that you can carry the glory of God, but you can't keep it. Mm. It's not for you to keep. Um, and sometimes as worship leaders, I'm speaking specifically in that arena. Yeah. Um, we we label people as glory carriers. Mm. And so everywhere they go, oh, that's a glory carrier. But the reason they are successful mm. is because they carry the glory of God, but mm. they don't keep it. Wow. They give it back to God. Wow. And so when we have something that God has entrusted us with, the best thing to do is carry it in such a way mm. that you serve people, but you give the glory back to God. Wow. And when we don't do that, it creates in us a sense of entitlement. Mm. You know, I am the one. And wow. if somebody else comes and God anoints them to do the same thing that I'm doing, mm. I'm jealous. Like, mm. I'm the one. Yeah. Like, I'm the one that's supposed to be doing yeah. that. I'm the one that's supposed to be in the spotlight doing that. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to rethink how we approach um, serving God because mm. all of it is to give glory back to him. Yeah. And so when your heart is not there, you mess up and, wow. you, and you become jealous of other people who also are gifted to do what you think only you can do. Wow. So so it's not a cliche when somebody compliments us and we say to God be all of the glory. No, that's not a cliche. Um, and I also I also say this because, and this is a quick yeah. <laughs> detour, but um, some people, if they say to God be the glory, it's just an automatic response. Mm. But I think if you don't give the God the glory as you're doing it, he ain't going to accept it as an afterthought. Like, you can't just say God to God be the glory, D, 
just because that's a, a natural yeah. response. Mm. But give God the glory as you're doing it. Man. Give it to him as you are using your gifts or using your talents in whatever way so that, in essence, he does get the glory. So yeah. when you say to God, be the glory, that's yeah. a true statement. He got it yeah. as I was giving it. So that's That's good. And I think a lot of people don't even really practically know how to give God glory right. as they're just kind of journeying through whatever it is that he's called and he's gifted right, them to do. Right, right. So so just kind of kind of give us some ways if a person is preaching or they're singing or they're, you know, serving on a particular ministry, like what are some ways that they could just stop and say, I'm going to give God glory as I'm doing whatever it is that he's called us to do. Absolutely. So the first thing, uh, one of the things that we we need to do is recognize that the gift that I have, whether it's preaching, whether it's singing, whether it's playing, whether it's dancing, whatever it is, whether it's being an usher, because that is a, a particular a gifting and an anointing as well. Everything that I do, I am doing it as unto the Lord, not as unto people, not for praise, not so people can uh, boost my ego. Yeah. Like, Whatever I do, it is because God gave me the ability to do it. God gave me the gift. So focus right there. Stop and say, hey, Lord, I know that I can sing, yeah. <laughs> but you gave me the gift. Yeah. Acknowledge the giver. Acknowledge the source of whatever it is that you have. Yeah. That's the first way you can give glory to God. And yeah. as you're doing it, keep in mind that I'm not just doing it to serve myself. I'm doing it to serve people. Yeah. I'm doing it to, to give back to the body of Christ yeah. what God has given to me. Um, and if we keep that in mind, we won't get so caught up in the me thing. Yeah. It's about me. It's about what I have. It's about what I can do. Um, and always just focus on giving glory back to God, because if you give it to him, he'll return it to you in ways that you can't even imagine. Wow. Like he'll give he'll give back to you in, in some incredible ways. So don't focus on what I can get out of it. Yeah. Uh, give it to him and, and he'll pay you. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's good, especially as we, you know, continue to talk about jealousy because a lot of times we, as they talked about this past Sunday, we get in trouble when it comes to comparison. Oh, yes. And when you start looking at what I can't do versus what you can do and what you can't do versus what I can't do, like, you will get in trouble. Yes. And you will start thinking about all of your quote-unquote wins. Yes. And as you're going throughout whatever it is you're doing, you right. won't give God glory. And so... I think that's good because we are in a very great season in mm -hmm. the life of the church, right. capital C church. Uh, there are many people literally in droves giving their life to Christ yes. like for the first time. For the first time. Um, people are rededicating their life to Christ. They're joining churches post-COVID when people said that this would no longer be the case. Yes. And I think if we look across the pond and we start looking at other churches or other ministries or whatever per se and say, uh, let's start, you know, counting folks. How many you got versus how many I got? Or what we're doing versus what you're doing. Um, if we don't do that, then we won't get into jealousy. But if we do start counting, right. we'll become jealous. Absolutely. Um, just just kind of speak to as we get ready to wrap up. There was a man who I, I think was arguably the first, well, not a man, a being who was first jealous. His name was Lucifer. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lucifer was in heaven. <laughs> saw that literally all of the glory belonged to God. Mm -hmm. But for reasons that Lucifer know, <laughs> he decided that he wanted to be like God. And he decided that he was going to take a third of the angels mm -hmm. and they all went away. What was so dangerous about that is that there are other people or other beings per se that actually follow Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Just kind of speak to the danger of what a, one person could do if they have followers and there is jealousy among them. To kind of talk to um, why we should have a spirit of discernment to recognize when somebody wants glory mm -hmm. and just kind of speak to the danger of following people that always want to be in the spotlight. I think, whoa, um, that's loaded, Ron. <laughs> um, I think one of the the primary things we, we should think about um, as it relates to that uh, specifically is having a great gift is one thing, but we also have to think about the influence that mm. comes with having a great gift. That's good. So when you have a great gift plus influence, mm. you can get anybody to do anything, yeah. especially those who are enamored mm. with your gift. Wow. They will do whatever you say. Well, he said it, so I yeah. got to follow. So those people who have great gifts, great anointing, pray 
and ask God to keep your heart pure so that you don't influence people to follow you and not God. Yeah. Like I don't I don't necessarily want anybody running behind my gift. Yeah. I want you if you celebrate the gift, I want you to celebrate it because you're giving glory to God, mm -hmm. not just to me. Mm -hmm. Um and when when it comes to Lucifer, he wanted to bathe in the glory that was only reserved for God. Yeah. And a lot of us uh, this stage is very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, this platform is very yeah, dangerous yeah. because sometimes we can get so enamored with the lights and everybody watching us yeah. that we soak it all in and it becomes about us. Yeah. Um, and we just forget to give the glory to God. And so those of us who are um, charged with, with serving in official capacities always need to be aware of our influence. Yeah. Always need to be aware of, am I leading people to Christ or am I leading people to me? Yeah. Um, and we sh everything that we do, everything that we say should always point back to Christ yeah. and not necessarily us. God uses us yeah. to draw people to him yeah. using our gifts and our unique talents and all of those things. And we have to be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's good, man. I don't want to add too much to that because that was good and loaded. Yeah. <laughs> that was good and loaded. But it is my prayer that not just serving in ministry. Mm hmm but just having relationships with people in general, yeah, that we won't have a heart of jealousy. Yes. Because I hope I'm not, you know, too far out of bounds, but I would go as far as to say that jealousy is demonic. It satanic. definitely is. I mean, if it originated with Satan, things that come from him are demonic and satanic. Yes. Why would we want to look like Satan and he's not our father? Wow. But if we want to look like our father, our father, as the Bible says, God is love. Yes. We should always walk in love. So it don't matter if it's a co-worker, family member, neighbor, right. church member, spouse, child. It don't matter what it is. Right. Like, we need to walk in love. And, man, you helped us this morning, brother. Bless you, brother. So I appreciate you, man. Appreciate it was it was fun you. doing it this morning. Got to do it again. We got to. We got to <laughs> do it again. We got to run it back. So, so I pray that you will bless this morning as we continue to walk. With the Lord, listen, don't be jealous of anybody. God has gifted you. He's called you. And if God has given you a gift, don't look outside the window and say, hey, I wish that their grass was my grass because you don't even know their grass could be spray painted. So <laughs> follow God with your whole heart. And before we get ready to leave you on the day, we just want to say thank you for how you give. Listen, because of the way that you give, we have been able to give to four different communities. And I want to say thank you on the behalf of Dr. Thomas Beavers, our senior pastor, my pastor, and on behalf of the leadership of our church for how you give. So several ways you can give. You can give, give during person, on our Sunday services, or you can give during the week, Monday through Friday from 9, 30, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Our church office is open. We have a drop box that's open 24-7. Just come up to the church, go to the left, look to the right. Over on the brick side of the building, you'll find a drop box. You can mail in your gift to 7400 London Avenue South, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. Give online at www.beatmetothestar.net forward slash give. Or you can text in the amount that God lays on your heart to 855-912-7781. You give by cash app, dollar sign, beat me to the star. Or you can give by Venmo at beat me to the star. Father, we want to say thank you this morning for everything that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Father, we pray that as we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God, we know one of the works of the flesh is jealousy. And God, we don't want to walk in jealousy. We want to walk in the spirit and experience the fruit of the spirit, which is love. So, Father, help us in the areas where we're weak. Build us up where we're torn down, and God continue to smile upon us. God bless the gifts and the givers. May every gift be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you fathers before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And everybody in agreement said amen, amen, amen. We love you so much. We will see you at 12 noon for our 12 noon service. Go in peace. Go with God. Have a great day.